Mastermind and Spirits Review. So tonight from Siren Craft Brew, this is their Silver Strand Californian IPA. I ain't got a clue where I got it from. It might have been Asda, I think. It might have been Tesco's. I ain't got a clue. So it's a beautifully light, crisp IPA with waves of welcome hoppy bitterness. Clean base notes provide the perfect base for a tropical hop contingent to work some magic. El Dorado, Cascade and Mosaic provide punchy pineapple, guava and peach flavours with a Moorish resinous finish. And the ABV is a rather nice 6%. Surely good show. So, just finished the first coat in the bedroom. I've got the dickiest stomach though. Coming home to your dog. Doing whatever he's done in the dining room. Then having to clean it up. The kitchen towel. Not good. But we love our dogs, don't we? Yeah. Fucking the shit all over your fucking ass. <clears throat> but there you go. So, there we have it. Siren Craft Brew. And as we can see, um, hazy looking pour. Um, hazy, looks orange. On, we'll go with orange. Orange looking pour. Centimetre of white head. Nice bit of carbonation going on. And yeah, I've got a second coat to put on tonight and then try and get the uh, get the gloss work done. <laughs> Skirting boards in the back of the door shouldn't take long, he says. Oh, good resin. Um, straight away that. Got to say on the nose, not much on the nose, if I'm being honest. There's a hint of tropical on the nose, but that is it. At the moment, at least. It may change after a few minutes. Oh, I so need this. Yeah, get some beer down one's neck. Oh, lovely bitey resin on that. Suddenly getting the peach. I don't know about guava. Pineapple. Yeah, definitely getting pineapple. I, I honestly don't know about guava. It's not something I eat. And unless it was the only thing going off, then, you know, I'm not posh and we don't do guava. You know, some people might do guava, but I certainly don't. So, if I've not had it before, then I won't know what it is. So, I don't know, obviously I can taste different tropical things coming through. But, just turn around and say, ooh, yeah, I've got guava. I mean, I'm getting a lovely sweet taste coming through that's not peach or pineapple. So, is that guava? Maybe so. Maybe so. Oh. So first of the bedrooms decorating, and uh, yeah, it's it's good to get it out of the way. Pain in the arse. So decorating's a pain, isn't it? And uh, we're going through the house. So by the time we've done, we'll be back to being top-notch painters and decorators again. Because it's funny how you lose the mojo, and then a few years later, all of a sudden, you know, you get back into the stride. Got to work this morning. Three dead mouse in the um, in the marquee. I had an issue with mice and uh, eating the blooming seeds that I, that I put away for that next year. And I didn't realise I even had mice in there. And then something's been at my seeds. And then one day I was I was reaching up and there's a bloody mice there and I oh, morbidly fearful of mice. So put some poison. I've put poison in today as well. But uh, I put four mouse traps in last Friday, Thursday, Friday, and it's took three of them out. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to keep doing it and keep doing it. In turn, absolutely none are in there. 
but um, it's uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? Rodents these days, you're never far away, and uh, unless there's a predator keeping uh, them at bay, they'll breed and breed, and there's the issue. You know, rats, mice. Blah. I mean, all right in their own habitat if they're in the middle of a forest because, you know, there are predators that will take care of them. And, uh, um, but when it's on, you know, I don't want it anywhere near me. And, uh, as soon as I've done the house, the shed's next, that little shed, and uh, I'm going to lift it up somehow. And um, maybe even lift it and... Um, balance it a bit higher so that I can always see underneath and uh, try and put to bed the, the, I suppose it's one of those things isn't it you know all all of these animals or rodents or whatever they are they hide in hedges and around us we've got some scruffy gardens at the back of us and at the side next door's garden he's a scruffy bleeder and all so um <clears throat> You know, they're, they're f um, breeding grounds, that sort of thing. So they come to your garden, it's like, yeah, have some snack, man. Yeah. Oh, use your garden as a walkthrough. Hey. You know, and, uh, yeah. But like at work with the marquee, it's, it's a dry, warm space for them. There's no food in there, per se, apart from them seeds, like I said. But no actual food. But I need to nobble them because I want to start um it's nearly growing season so i want to get some like tomatoes and certainly from the beginning of march i want to start sowing my seed sorry my seed but well, get in <laughs> but yeah I, ne I need to start getting some seedlings on the go uh, uh and this year I, I want to go full hog really i want to develop the the seeds seedlings the where where i won last year i want to push the boundaries i want to i've got more pumpkin seeds than you can imagine and again at both workplaces i want to plant pumpkins and uh you know i want at the newark workplace i haven't got the space to do it where the likes of pheasants and stuff can't have a go at them but saying that, you know, it's always worth having a pl having a try, and this is what I'll do at both sites. And uh, at the at the Cockliffe site, there's a cesspit, so you've got to imagine that there's cesspit, the piss and shit and all that sort of, sort of stuff goes into this um, like a macerator that batters it about, you know. And then it go, drains off, and it drains off into the cesspit area. And uh, oh, yeah, the sort of things I've, I've got. To, <laughs> I've got to scrape that off as well. Uh, I'm not going on my fucking hands and knees to do that. Fucking bollocks to that. I'm having the smell of piss on my trousers all day long. Fucking kneeling down and it's, and um, kneeling in piss stained, so, pissy, smelly soil. No, but I'll get a mat. And uh, I'll get a mat. I'll take one of my mats from home and kneel on that bugger. But um, I'm going to uh, scab it all off. So when I say scab it all off, get the spade. Just get rid of all the top layer. The nettles, any grass. Get it suit as clean as I can. And then I'm going to start planting hydrangeas. Hydrangeas don't care if, the, if it's an acid soil or an alkaline soil. So you can basically plant what you like. Uh, if it's an acid soil, the, the flowers will be pink. You know, really quite dark pink. If it's a neutral soil, they'll be white. And if it's an alkaline soil, which is what it will be, because it's all that piss and all that, it'll be blue. And that I know because I had a couple of um, cuttings that I put in there just to see if they'd do anything. And they grew. So um, the plan is this year with the, with the cesspit area is to um, plant it up to the brim with hydrangeas. 
So they give height. Below, I don't like it when strings mm -hmm. move in front of you. Reach out. Yeah. Below, I'm planting pumpkins. And why I'm planting pumpkins is the pumpkins will develop. They'll have unlimited water, or pissy water, and they'll be able to grow in that pissy water. Obviously, we're not going to serve them with food to the people at Cocker. That'd be a laugh, wouldn't it? Hey, what's the? Uh, excuse me, chef. What's this? Yes, I'm getting a, a nuttiness, and I'm I'm getting a pissiness with this food. Uh, 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 I don't know. Got these specially from. We specially grew these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not going to happen, obviously. But because the water's there, there's goodness. Yeah, there's goodness in piss. Yeah. Not so, not so, not sure what sort of goodness. But yeah, there's some goodness, I suppose. And uh, yeah. And I'm hoping that they grow into some mega sized pumpkins for Halloween. Although I, I ain't carving them, you can bob that one off. Yeah, stop carving them. Stink of piss comes for you. These smell nice, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass on that job. But I am looking forward this year to um, to really absolutely pushing the boat out of and everything on where I where I've won, go for it. Where I haven't won, nah, bugger it. You know, can't win them all, can you? Sometimes I need to tell myself that in life because sometimes you know, in life, when you think about anxiety, stress, and what you can control and what you can't control, if you can't control it, then there's no use worrying too much because what can you do? You know. I mean, we know the world where this COVID is in a right poor state of affairs, climate and all that. And, uh, yeah, there's only so much in life you can control. Uh, the thing is not, not to live anywhere near low, low level. The thing is keep away from living in places where there's tornadoes and that, I suppose, and floods, flood zones. In certain parts of the world at least and places where they have fires regular you know keeping away from them it does make you wonder doesn't it you know where you live in this world uh, makes such a difference oh I hope dog's outside so 13 minutes in bit of a chat tonight um sometimes you know it's just nice to have a rattle and uh we all need it. I mean, today I, I've been at work today. I've tri uh, took a load of dahlia seedlings, trimmed dahlias down. I've um, pulled out all the old veg that never really came to fruition. Pulled out weeds like nettles and brambles and that bloody side of everything. <laughs> that nettle and bramble side, you can do that. Never touching that again. Tasted okay, but I, I'm not drinking anything that's got brambles and flipping nettles in. No. That's taking it to the limit, that is. It's taking the piss. But um, yeah, it's been a good day, and uh, I can and obviously nobbling free mice. Uh, not that I like. I had to walk outside with the mouse trap for like arms length, like, and then press the thing to undo the mouse, and it's like, Ugh! and then walk away and not try and not feel guilty. And obviously, you know, I don't like killing things, but these bloody things. You know, they're, they're a pest and, uh, oh, yeah, I'd rather the poison do the trick, to be honest, because the poison, I don't, if you don't see it, you don't, it don't bother you. And, uh, oh, yes, yeah, not good, not good at all, but what can you do, you know, you just, uh, yeah. It's uh, not, not the best, not the best at all. Um... So, tomorrow lots of planting. Found out today we had 200, up to 200 people there yesterday in the duration of the day going and looking at the, um, the wedding venue at the Cockliffe site. 
and it's great to see people you know looking at my work they're not seeing the whole you don't see all of it in winter yeah you know it's winter uh it's probably the worst time of the year to see anything but still um the grass was in tip-top condition well it was so i started driving over the front lawn but obviously there's lots of people parking so it is what it is cotton and all but um yeah it's great to see people enjoying your work and uh and then this weekend we've got another one at the newark site and again i'm i'm putting an, an enhancements in all the time and i've got three days up there now three days of solid graft to make the site look as good as i can put stripes in the lawns uh the andy man's doing his thing uh the inside staff they're doing their thing i'm gonna make the outside look as tip top as i can and uh lots more planting done and and you know this the seeds are being sown for the future and the future's rosy <laughs> as a gardener it's all about sowing that seed it's about planting that seed with people and letting them take it interesting interesting anyway back to the beer that's what we came here for so for those who come and think, God, this guy that was on about absolute crap, one does apologise, you know. Um, my short beer reviews, that is pure beer review. This is a bit of, a bit of uh, you know, a bit of life. And uh, let's be fair, we all have life. And uh, in that way, it is what it is. So, like I say, it's a hazy orange pour, white out. It's our time to breathe now uh out of the can there is a tropical nose on this now pineapple is prevalent on the nose okay pineapple and peach certainly at the forefront of the taste there is a sweetness i presume is guava but i can't be 100 percent because i don't, don't know what guava tastes like uh, apart from the fact that I've had a Brewdog beer that was a guava beer and uh, you kind of get the only element that's in there is guava so that kind of uh, tells you that that's the element you know if, you, if, you, if it's not something you eat or then you, you know you have to take it into consideration don't you yeah and I don't get paid to do beer reviews I do beer reviews because I like drinking beers and trying beers and being Try to be positive, positive about life, positive about breweries. And uh, we're in the tough month now. January is a tough month for the breweries. And uh, it looks like I'm doing three long days at work this week. But uh, if that's the case, then great. Because at the weekend, me and the wife might go out and um, support. And not only that, just to get out of the ass a bit, go and support a couple of local breweries and uh, you know, do what we can. And uh, you know, if you can support your local breweries across the UK, for those people watching, you know, go to your local pub, buy some beers from local breweries, buy some beers from local pubs, get some draft beer, cans, bottles, you know, don't bother with the supermarkets, they earn enough all year round and they pay a pittance the breweries earn a pittance from what they get unless they're brewing mega bulk like like some marston's marston's can cope because they and dream king because they brew mega bulk a lot of breweries brew and don't earn a lot from supermarkets by the time they've got it out there paid duty you'd be surprised northern monk must be selling death star 2 pretty much at a loss to get it in supermarkets but it's good it's good for their name because people see that and go to their website and i too need to go to their website but you know it's only so much one beer review i can do which is the good thing is that a load of us doing beer reviews from rampant line beer reviews to hop scene to mersey beers to bullman beer reviews to kemp beer reviews to scotland wonder to all the beer no idea to rasco and disco 
Chris's bad reviews, Dean's bad reviews, <sighs> Paul's bad reviews, um, Real Ale Craft Beer, Sun. Um, for me bed and, and and everybody else you know there's so many bear reviews and apologies if i've not mentioned your name uh it's just what came into the ad at that moment in time rasco and disco obviously uh and and then the people who are we don't class as bear reviews you do bear reviews you know there's lots of them as well out there i suppose craft beer channel for those that watch that and i know they're popular does popular make you the best no, and I've been thinking about uh, looking at other beers. I fucking know I've gone over 20 minutes. I've been looking at other beers and beer reviewers. And uh, there's a there's a brewery or two out there that get very favourable reviews from certain beer reviewers. And I'm going to go out and buy their beers. They won't know I've bought them until I do a beer haul because I'll give my daughter the money to do it. Although her name is the same as me, so that might give the game away. We'll sort it out in a different name. And uh, we'll be trialling their beers and we'll see how they are. We'll see if they're as good as certain people say they are. It's going to be interesting. And uh, I won't pull no punches if they're not. So, yeah, really enjoyed this. Lovely tropical flavours. That's really all you need, all we need to know. Some nice, decent tropical tasting bit. I haven't got a clue Whoa, where it was from. I'm thinking Asda, but I'm not 100%. But yeah, another cracker from Siren Craft Brew. For me, a good 4.2 out of 5. Cheers all. Bit longer than I've meant to there. I've stopped rapping. Cheers.